Hello YouTube, my name is Josh and I want to welcome you to our channel. In this video, we're going to teach you how to enjoy cloud gaming on Google Cloud. Not to be confused with Google's Project Stream. Google Cloud is different altogether. It's much more similar to Azure or Amazon's AWS service. With that said, there's a couple things to be excited about when it comes to Google Cloud. One is that, like Azure, Google Cloud is available in a lot of different territories and regions. So if you live in a place that doesn't get a lot of other cloud gaming services, there's a good chance that Google Cloud will work for you. The second exciting thing about Google Cloud is that when you sign up for a new account, you get $300 of free credit that can be used for cloud gaming. So if that sounds good, continue watching the video, we'll teach you how to set everything up, and then at the end of the video, we'll show you a little bit of gameplay so you can see how it performs. It's all coming up next. Your first step is to head on over to the Google Cloud website. From here, you can sign up for a free Google Cloud account, and remember that you have to sign up for a new account to get the $300 free credits. Once you're logged in with your account, the system will take you to the Google Cloud console. From here, you'll be prompted to create a new project. Go ahead and give your new project a name. It can be anything that you want. Our next step is to set up our virtual machine. Start by giving your server a unique name. Now before we continue, I want to take a moment to cover something really important. When it comes to cloud gaming, the location of your server matters a great deal. On the virtual machine screen that we were just editing, there's an option right below the name of your server to choose the location of that server. You'll want to choose both a location that is physically close to where you live, as well as a location that offers the P100 GPU. You'll find a link in the description to research the locations that are available to you so that you pick the right one. I'm pausing the video to explain this portion because as I was recording the footage, it already had the best location for me personally selected already, so I didn't click it as I was recording, but I wanted to make sure that you guys get this right. All right, let's head back to the video. Our next step is to select a CPU and GPU that has enough memory and power for cloud gaming. When you're finished, click on the Customize button. Select the Tesla P100 Workstation GPU. Now we get to choose which operating system our server will run. Scroll down and then click on Windows Server 2016. Now you get to choose how much hard drive space your server will have. Every 100 gigabytes of space is roughly $17 per month, so choose wisely. And that's about it for your virtual machine. Go ahead and deploy it. We're going to be using Parsec to handle the actual streaming process. For those of you that aren't familiar, Parsec is a free software that encodes the video from your games and then streams it to your devices at home. Before we actually launch and edit our server, we're going to want to make some changes to the firewall on our server so that we can reach Parsec from across the internet. Go back to the cloud console and then click on VPC networks. Choose to create a new firewall rule. You're welcome to name this anything that you want, just make sure that you make a note of it. The description can also be anything that you want. Create a tag for this rule. A tag is basically a nickname that we'll use later to connect this to our server. Use zeros to fill out the port information. And then our last step is to open up ports UDP 8000 through 8011. Now we're going to head back to the Cloud Console to apply this rule to our server. Click on the name of your server and then choose to edit it. Scroll down to the Tag section and then type in the tag name that you gave to your firewall rule. 
And that's basically it. Scroll to the bottom and save your changes. Before we can connect to our server, we'll need to set up a Windows password. Go ahead and copy the password that it generates. As a precaution, I also like to paste that into my notepad just so I have it handy. Now we're finally ready to connect to the server. I'm using Google Chrome's built-in RDP client to make that connection. Paste the password that we copied earlier. Your first boot up may take some extra time, so just be patient. Normally Windows Server Manager opens every time you turn on the machine. We're going to fix that. Choose Local Server on the left. Turn off Internet Explorer Enhanced Security. Next, click the Manage button and then open up the Server Manager properties. Choose not to automatically start the Server Manager at Login. Let's go ahead and change the Windows password to something easier. Click on Settings, and then open up Accounts. From here, click on Sign in Options, and then choose to change your password. Go ahead and paste the password that we created before, and then create a new one that's easier for you to remember. Some of the files that we'll download later don't download very easily in Internet Explorer, so we're going to install Google Chrome. Now we'll set up our user to automatically log in when the computer starts up. Search for NetPLWiz. Uncheck the password requirement box, and then click apply at the bottom. To save this setting, type in the password that we created in the previous step. Let's go ahead and enable audio on our server. Search for services. Now scroll down and look for Windows Audio. Double click it once you find it. Switch it from manual to automatic and then start the service. Now we need to install our audio driver. Open up your browser and then search for Virtual Audio Cable. It'll probably be the first option in your results. Go ahead and extract the file that you downloaded. I'm personally going to create a folder on my hard drive just to keep everything nice and neat. Choose the VB Cable 64 file and then run it as an administrator. Windows Server 2016 can be a little picky about the types of files that certain users can install. So before we start installing things like our graphics card driver, we're going to supercharge our user. Click on the search button and search for PowerShell. Now type in PowerShell, execution policy, 
unrestricted. When you're done typing, hit the enter key on your keyboard to save this setting. Now it's time to install our NVIDIA graphics driver. I'll put a link to it in the description and then you can just copy and paste it for the next step. After you've copied the link in the description, open up the browser on your server and then paste it. At this point in the process, it would be a good idea to go ahead and restart your server. You can do that by going back to the Google Cloud Console and clicking on your instance. Now we need to set up our virtual displays. Start by opening the Device Manager. Under Monitors, delete both of the displays that you find there. Now click on your GPU and disable it. Now enable it again and it will automatically generate the displays that we'll use in Parsec. As a final step, Disable the display that's not connected to the NVIDIA GPU. It's finally time to install Parsec. Open your web browser and then visit ParsecGaming.com. Click the button to install Parsec for Windows. When you're prompted, enable controller support. Go ahead and log in with your Parsec account. If you don't have one, you'll find a link right there on the screen to create one. As soon as it loads, make sure that you enable hosting. Next, go to Settings. Click on Network, and then type in 8000 for your server start port. This matches the firewall rule that we set up earlier in the process. Now click on Hosting, and make sure that you have the correct monitor select. It should be the one that's connected to the NVIDIA GPU. If your download speed at home is at least 30 megabits per second, you can increase quality by raising this number in Parsec's server settings as well. For now, Parsec's echo canceling is a little bit hit and miss, so I like to turn that off. Now let's tell Parsec to start automatically with the server. Right-click the Start menu and choose Run. Type in Shell colon Startup with no spaces. Now drag Parsec from your Start menu first to your desktop and then into the Startup folder. And that's it! Your setup is completely done. From here, go back to the Google Cloud Console and restart your server one last time. On your home computer, make sure that you've installed the Parsec app and that you signed into it with the same exact account that we just used on the server. 
Now you're looking at my home PC and you can see that my server is ready to go. And that's basically it. We're connected to the server now. You can go ahead and install things like Steam or other game services. Go ahead and get your game collection ready to go. And now you're probably ready to see what this thing actually does. What does gameplay look like? All that stuff. Well, you're in luck. That's coming up next. Explosion. All humans saved. <laughs> 